Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. I'm your host, Shanti, and today we are talking finances. No matter how much money you make right now, whether you are someone out there that may be on government assistance or maybe you make six or seven figures a year, this episode is going to propel you to the next level of your financial freedom. But more importantly, there's a little secret out there that's really going to push you to the next level. So get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say it again. No, no, no. What's up? You better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Chris, so happy that you showed up today. I am so excited for our Trust and Believe listeners to hear from someone that is so passionate about finances. And the reason why I use the word finances and not money is because I personally believe and feel free at any point to correct me. I personally feel like when people chase money, they're chasing they're chasing something that's like tangible, but it can go away. And when it, when we talk about finances, is it's a wholesome. It's kind of like when it comes to fitness, it's like there's fitness in your body and then there's your overall well-being. And so um, I'm just so excited for everyone to hear about that. But before we dive deep into that, I always like to find out why someone chose the career path and expertise that they have. And so can you just kind of give me a history on why you came into this passion for finances and a little bit of history of just your background in general? And thanks for having me on Trust and Believe. You know, I believe that um, by the end of this, people hopefully will trust me and and think that we they've learned something new in today's conversation. And so a little bit about me, my background is... Um, uh, I'm from Kankakee, Illinois. If you miss it, if you blink, you'll miss it. It's a little dot on the map. Um, Kankakee, Illinois, born in Starkville, Mississippi. Uh, grew up uh, with the opportunity of, of being a, a first child uh, to a mother that had seven, eight siblings. And um, just had to figure it out. I played sports in my previous career. Um, I was halfway gifted and could walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> and I uh, had an opportunity to, to, to leverage, leverage that into an education. Um, an education that led me to understanding that uh, athlete, you know, being a professional athlete was not a full-time career. Uh, but I was prepared for when that career ended that I had to figure out what else to do. So with a degree in finance from the University of Illinois, I then turned to learn how I can then uh, teach others teach my family. You know, the reason why I got into this was to teach my family and give my mother hope that one day she was going to have an opportunity to be able to walk away and retire from her job because the things she didn't know were the things that, that I, think I believe every human should know. Every person who was out there working for a betterment of themselves and their family should have the right and the ability to be able to do those things for their family. But how did they do that without the education and the information and the ability to execute on those ideas along the way? And so I got into this because of that. Why I stayed into this is because I got into the business and it's quite competitive. And uh, everyone said that you won't be able to do it. You're just a dumb jock. As an athlete, I'm super competitive. So if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to continue to do it. So um, I got into it, started to realize that there were people in the business that were good. And again, I wanted to be one of the great ones. So um, just compared myself in sports as I do now. And uh, that's how I ended up in the business. And that was uh, 22 years ago in, uh, in May. So we continue to do three things, right? We continue to, to strive and to survive. And we continue to inspire people every day. And that's what keeps me really focused. Uh, and you mentioned it's not necessarily about dollars and cents. It's about the freedom that we have because we're able to have those things, right? So yeah. we'll talk about that as we as we go along and have a little bit of fun with that. So, Yeah, I wanted to say, because I know you won't say because you are extremely humble. Tell them what, uh, tell them what sports team you played for. Come on, let them know. 
1997, I was a free agent pickup with the Chicago Bulls. I then left the Chicago Bulls and then um, was with San Antonio for a little bit. And then over and then um, the Clippers out in Los Angeles and then nice. um, an NBA. Right. And uh, everybody knows I got a chance to play or practice with Jordan and those guys on a daily basis. And then I played overseas for a couple of years over in Europe, touring, touring France. You know, so I France. learned du Français. I learned, I learned a little bit of French. Yes. I learned all that and had a great time drinking wine and, you know, and <laughs> walking on the Champs Elysees. You know, have a good time uh. in, in, in France. So it was wonderful. We love French things, French language, and we love France here at Team Shanti. We've been there a few times. So I'm just going to jump right into this financial thing because I believe that, and this is my opinion, and I just want to tell people that this is my opinion and how the word finance makes me feel, especially in today's world with social media. You see a lot of people kind of flexing their finances or they're giving these tips that is just like you need to be financially free and they have all these these tips and things that they're giving people but they're not ex- actually like living that lifestyle they're still on the path of growth or maybe they're regurgitating what other people say and so I want to know is it true and is it possible to have financial freedom for real and what are the steps the most important steps to get there regardless of you know how much money you're making at the time because I think if you have a job where you're making six to seven figures it's kind of people say well of course you know you have a job that's making a hundred thousand or more a year how do you inspire those people that may feel like they're not making that type of money yet if financial freedom is possible well sean first thing we got to do is we got to define financial freedom right and and so i'm going to change that narrative a little bit right so i said people will talk to me about retirement and hey here's what we need to do and i'll say no our goal is financial independence Mm. okay and financial independence is a couple things one it's it's we're working because we want to not because we have to right that means that we've accumulated enough revenue generating assets to live a quality of life and be able to, to never outlive our money. That is the goal. And I think wow. if people stop pursuing the large pile of money, because if I ask your, everybody in your audience, a question, Sean, they're all going to give me the same answer and I've never heard of anything different. So Sean, I'll ask you the question, which would you rather have? Would you rather have a large pile of money? Would you rather have income you can never outlive that provided a quality of life and minimize the taxes that you would pay and then left a legacy when it was all said and done? Which would you rather have? Prior to being a dad, that was kind of mixed. I was like, eh, I want to spend my money. I want to have a good time. I didn't necessarily think about a legacy. And now having children, it is all about my entire life is about my legacy and even how I raise them and just the simple conversations and activities we do every day. So now financially is completely focused on my legacy. And I've never heard though out or I was, I never heard, I think how you said like your money basically should outlive you. I never thought of it that way. I thought of it more in like save enough for your your children so that that's a different perspective that i have on it but that's my answer now absolutely right so so most people um i've never heard it different no matter how much money they make whether they make ten thousand or hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars in a year everybody will say that when it's all said and done i want to be able to live a fantastic quality of life and i want to never potentially run out of money those are the two things that people worry about. And so if we take the worries off the table, just take the worries off the table, mm-hmm. right? Which would you rather have? But the problem is people are pursuing the large pile of money, right? And that's why on social media, our wonderful social media platforms, that perception becomes reality. And the mm-hmm. problem is that the, most people that actually have money and significant amounts of it, you don't know it. They're not the ones that show that they, you know, hey, listen, I just bought a Tesla or, hey, you know, I just moved into, you know, this $3 million house or, you know, I make $300,000 a year. Typically, the people that are putting that out there, it's 
perception versus reality is Mm -hmm. I'm trying to perceive this. And we talk about keeping up with the Joneses. The problem with keeping up with the Joneses is every time you move next to the Jones, they move. Every time you buy a car that the Jones have, they buy a new one. So we want to stop keeping up with the Joneses. That's what we call behavior economics. We're going to talk a little Mm. bit about behavior economics and how we can change our behavior that in turn will change our outcome of our finances in the future and allow for us to pursue the idea of financial independence, right? Imagine being independent. I work because I want to, not because I have to. That means you can go into work one day and say, you know what? At the end of the day, if I did not work here anymore, my lifestyle is good. Mm -hmm. I can live my life. I can spend the time with my kids. I can go travel. I can do the things I want. And I don't have to worry anymore about making a paycheck. I love Again, that. I could preach. I could preach all day. No, I, I'm. I love it. I think that for me, because there are a lot of things I want to talk about. I think that for me is what are kind of the first three steps uh, to toward that, regardless of how much money you're making at the moment. And the reason why I ask that question is I just believe three steps. Um, really helps people build momentum because if you say, "Oh, work out," it's like, okay, but work out eat healthy have and work on your mental fitness. So you give them three things and it becomes more wholesome. So in terms of financial finances, I would love to know what are these first three things that whether you make a million dollars a year, whether right now, you know, you may be at 25 or 30 or $40,000 a year. What are these first three things that people can do to gain momentum to get to that place? Okay. Well, that's, that's easy, Sean. Um, First things first, right? First thing is the number one rule in any plan, specifically anyone we build or any strategy that's out there is pay yourself first. That's the easy one, right? Pay yourself first. Mm. So so what does that that mean? That means if you don't pay yourself, no one else is going to pay you more than what you feel like you're worth. Okay, so pay yourself first. That's That's numero uno. And there's multiple ways of paying yourself first. But at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. So that's your first step. The second step is take full advantage of all the plans that are out there that give you free money. That makes sense, right? So if there's free money, we take it, right? Why do we take it? So example is if your company has a 401k or 403b or a retirement plan, you put in at least what they match. Why? Because Sean, everybody, every time I would give, imagine if every time I gave you a dollar, Every time you gave me a dollar, I gave you two dollars back. How many times would you do that? You would do it over and time. Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. time. Chris, keep giving me these two dollars. Makes sense. <laughs> right? So those two dollars. Right. So, so so simple steps. Right. Pay yourself first and then take advantage of free plans that are out there. And then last but not least is organize your actions and intent. So here's the one that kicks gets everybody. Right. So um, most people's actions and their intent are two different things. So Mm -hmm. they intend to do, I'll give you an example. People buy insurance to take care of their family. But then when we ask the questions, why do you have it? And what was it designed to do? And why is it a round number? It doesn't match your income, things like that. They say, well, I just want my family to be taken care of. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. In my eyes, taking care of my son can mean giving him $10 million. In your eyes, it can mean giving them the ability and the knowledge to work, right? So their actions and intent have to be aligned. And the problem is, it's like, it's like working out. It's like, Sean, I want to lose weight, but I'm not willing to go to the gym. You know, I don't want to do that. Or, you know, I'm not willing to change my habits of what I eat, but I want to look better. And so those are three simple steps that people can take that, you know, they start looking at their actions and say, if they want to retire at 50, am I saving the right percentage to do so? If I want to protect my family, do I have the right types of insurance to do so? And if not, then you have to say, just because it's broken doesn't mean I have to accept it. I can change it and be willing to have the courage to do so. And that is the other part. Courage. Another question, um, and this is this is going to take it a little bit deeper. So there have been people that... Um, I've kind of mentored in the past and I'm, I'm not a money guy necessarily, but one of their struggles or for a lot of people, a lot of people's struggles is, is money and the amount of money they spend on just 
ridiculous things. And I'll be the first one to say that when I was 25 and, or 27 or whatever, I moved to L.A. and it was the weekend and I got paid for my dance gig. I was the first one running to Ross and to the Nike store. Well, it wasn't Nike store at the time. Foot Locker and buying the shoes for a two and a half hour outing at the club. Right. Or then you get a little older, you get a little money and you want, you know, the bigger apartment before you have the money to really buy that. Or, you know, one of the things that I hear a lot of friends talk about in Texas, no shade to Texas, is that people are house poor. They have these huge houses, but they're still struggling on their bills. What is what is the psyche behind that? And how do you get someone to break that habit? Ooh, ooh. Now we're going somewhere, right? So, yes. <laughs> so Sean, part of that is 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 what we call behavioral economics, right? Okay. And under, understanding that that their behaviors, there are behaviors in which they are they are consumed with that lead them to do things because at the end of the day, Sean, everybody just wants to be accepted for who they are, right? They want to be accepted. Everybody wants to be successful. And so in my mind, right, having a big house may be successful, right? And then people will perceive I'm successful whether I am or not. That's the perception, Mm -hmm. right? And we all know that perception and reality are two different things. And so if you look at every relationship online, it's all roses, right? But we all know behind the scenes that, you know, there's there's difficulty, there's challenge, there's fights, there's this. Hey, you know, we we on the edge. Hey, we need to separate. All types of things. But if you look at the way social media perceives it, I mean, everybody's in love in the United States and they, you know, there's never <laughs> going to be any ever, no, challenges. So, so, and if you look at everybody online, there are no people that are struggling on, on, online with, with, with health and fitness, right? Everybody's mm-hmm. in great shape and everybody's doing wonderful things and they're changing their life and everything else. So, so, so part of that has to do with society and that we have to stop. My mother once told me, Here's a quote I'll give you, and I think everybody should try and try and try and think of it, think of it like this: is you don't have to be all things to everybody, but you need to be something to somebody. Mm. Okay, and the one person you got to be something to is to yourself. If you're not true to yourself, how can you be? How can you be true to somebody else? So, so that's a big part of this. Is I think that most people, unfortunately, have gotten caught in the rat race, right? Results, action, thinking. So that's the rat. That's the rat race, right? Results action thinking right so we do little thinking and we create these these actions that give us this big thing and then we have to recover from that right and so i buy a big house then all these things da, 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 all these things happen and now i don't have money to put stuff in the house i'm barely able to pay my bills blah 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 but the perception in the society is that i'm going to uplift you because of that now I would challenge this to say that the majority of people should think differently and say, if everybody else is doing it, I shouldn't do that. Mm. Why not? Right? Because it's against the norm. So if everybody else is doing that, like I'll give you an example. Funny story. So I have a car. You ready, Sean? I mean, you want to believe this. I have a car. I'm ready. Yeah. I bought the car 11 years ago. 12, 12, 11 years ago. I bought the car from... Um, uh, at the time, it was um, it was a used car and it was a demo. So there was a there was there was no owner, but it, it was me. And um, I walked in and I, I, I purchased a car and I put you know I, I paid a lot of money for it or whatnot. And it wasn't a big car, but it, it's a twenty thousand dollar car, twenty one thousand, right? And it was a Mercedes Benz. Oh, yes, yeah. y'all. <laughs> it, it was a black Mercedes Benz. She sits on 12 inch rims. I mean, she, she nice, right? And that perception is reality because I wanted my clients to perceive me as being successful when I drove up in a nice mm-hmm. Mercedes Benz, right? But then there came a time where I said, I don't need this car to validate the power, the education and the importance I can give to clients because I went to a guy's house that was worth a billion dollars and he said he drove a pickup truck and I asked, I said, Whose truck is that? You know, he's like, it's mine. He said, I said, why? He said, because it reminds me all the time of why money will never validate of who I am. 
He goes, it reminds me of the hard work I put in. It reminds me. So I said, that's interesting. If it's he can do it, I can do it, right? So right. I then sought out to say, why do I need a car payment? I don't need one. So I put it on the track to say, I'm going to pay off my car, and I'm not going to buy another one until I no longer can drive this one. Does that make right. sense? Yes, so, But it's a little sure. different mindset, right? Can I afford a new car? Absolutely. I can afford a lot of new cars, right? But that's not the point. My whole point is that is that what's more important, right? Is it the perception that hey Chris has a nice car or is it the fact that the car? So, here's the here's the here's the big thing. The car, Sean. I'll give you a wild guess. At this point, I drive all the time. How many miles do you think I have on this car? It is a long did you, joke in my soul. How, how long did you say you had it? 20 I have 11 years. 11, 11 years, 11 years. 11 years. <sighs> I would say 11 years, maybe 132,000. 132. Okay. Great guess. Okay. Sean, let me give you a real number. As of this morning, it was 389,432 <laughs> miles on the car. And Let's go. People will get in a car and say, why don't you get a new car? You I can <laughs> afford a new car. And the answer is, why? Hmm. This one gets me from point A to B. It's still a nice car. You look at her outside, she, she, she gets him from A to B. You get her, she kind of floats. Okay, I get it, right? She, she wears <laughs> lipstick on the wheels when it's nice outside. She looks <laughs> fresh, right? And it's still classy, right? But why would I take good money and put it behind bad money? Because we understand that cars, unless they're collectibles, depreciate an asset from day one. Right. Then do we buy depreciating assets or do we buy accumulating assets? And the answer is simple. We buy accumulating assets so we can get to financial independence, right? We're either going closer or further away from our goal and our objective. And so I challenge people all the time, just because you can, doesn't mean you should, Mm. right? Just because you can. So, so many times, Sean, to be honest, I'm just coaching people on the things that are important to them and helping them understand that, this is what's important. And if this is important, then this is what we need to do to accomplish that. The actions and intent become aligned side by side. And then all of a sudden, it's like I have a clear vision of what I need to be doing and how I'm doing it. And then, hey, coach, help me get there. That's that's kind of how. We- I'll say that um, I'm kind of like. Uh, half and half with you. So I have a truck that I bought. It was the first truck that I ever bought with my first uh, successful fitness program, 2007. It was my first truck and I still have it and I refuse to sell it. I actually only have like 30 something, maybe 40,000 miles on it in 13 years, which is cool. But I have bought some new cars, so I'm not all the way there with you. Um, But in the, in the mind frame, in the mindset, and I will not get rid of that car because it definitely reminds me of the time when I was driving my Ford Focus and my mirror was falling off. The, my, 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 uh, my side mirrors were falling off and I had duct tape on, duct, duct tape to keep them on. And that was the first car that I bought. And it just, it just, it's just a reminder of, you know, hard work. And just the, the struggle that I went through to get to that point. Now, mind you, I do. I, I, I love cars, though. Like, I love cars. So that's that point. That's that part. But yeah, um, I, everybody has a passion, right? So, yeah, 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 yeah. so, 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 so as, as long as it's funny, um, I'll give you this, Sean. So, so I have some athletes as clients. I got some physicians as clients. I got everyday Joe as clients. And I, I always tell them this. If, if you do the right things, if you save the right amount of money, pay yourself first and do these things, I don't care what you do with the rest. Go blow mm. it. Go do whatever you want, right? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, you have a 90% chance of accomplishing exactly what you want. So, so don't just live to save all your money. That's pointless, Right. So, so we empower people to actually go. Sp- I literally call people and say, "You need to go spend money." They're like, "Wait, you're in our, you're my advisor." I say, "Well, why are we doing this if you're not going to?" Remember, our goal is to financial independence, to a quality of life. Isn't that what it's about? Right? To create that in, that quality of life that we want to be able to spend more time. And if we can do that, and we have the capability of doing that without sacrificing something else, then why wouldn't we do it? We yeah. would every time. Um, 
I want to switch gears for a second because, you know, someone could be listening to this or watching this and they could say, okay, you know, this Chris is obviously was a super successful um, athlete and was obviously very intelligent and got a degree and is, you know, prominent in his career. And Sean T, you have all these fitness programs like this makes sense to you. And there's a lot of people that you know, at least from where I'm from, whose family is still on government assistance and they just don't see a way out of that. And they are or it could be it could be not from where I'm from. And it's just a single mom or a single dad out there that's working, you know, a couple different jobs. And this conversation is hard for them, would be hard for them to relate to because they just feel like they're drowning every day. Right. And trying to make ends meet. And I, this may be a hard question or maybe not, but how do we, what do we, um, what kind of lessons, how can we like teach them, inspire people to find an avenue to, you know, to try to find that, to achieve that um, financial independence when they're at such a state at which the struggle, as people say, the struggle is real. Right. Right. Um, well, well, Sean, it's 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 all perceptive. So so part of that is is doing something first, right? And so I believe here's my honest belief, right? And this is just me being me, right? I believe every single human being out there, every single one of them. I don't care who you are. I don't care under any circumstance. It, it's irrelevant, right? Can save ten dollars every time they get paid. We do it. We spend it doing stupid stuff, right? And it doesn't matter what it is, right? It's a nominal number. It's a number. It's ten dollars, right? And if someone can just wrap their arms around, if people say I can't save ten dollars, here's what I will challenge them to do: I'll say either you have a spending problem or you have a lifestyle problem. It's mm-hmm. one of the two, right? And if that's a lifestyle problem, it means we need to carve back the lifestyle a little bit. That's the nature of the beast, right? Um, cause at the end of the day, we need to live below our means, not at our means or above our means. Let's live below our means. Right. And I think we've gotten to the society part where we live over our means. If you look at it, 98% of people have, have more, more debt than they do asset, assets, 98%, Sean. I mean, that's not a, that's not a statistic. That's not a, that's not a, a statistic that's just out floating out there. That's a real statistic. Wall street journal, Forbes magazine, people are living with more debt than they do assets. The average family, the average family with two kids, picket fence, right? Everyday living family in their mid 40s has less than $30,000 combined saved for their financial future, period. So, Sean, this is a this is the real pandemic. Let's call mm-hmm. it what it is. The real pandemic is people, unfortunately, have been addicted just like they're addicted to sugar. Right? They've been addicted to things and they have to disconnect that because at the end of the day, it's only going to lead to catastrophic failure in the future. So it's just simple stuff, Sean. I mean, where I'm from, I would challenge people when I grew up, when I started in the business, let me tell you, I went back to Kankakee, Illinois. The average person makes $30,000 a year. I wasn't doing million dollar plans, Sean. You know what I was doing? I was telling people, hey, listen, you blow that money somewhere else, you can save five to $10 every time you get paid. And that, well, let me show you what that'll do for your family long-term. And that will impact you and your family in a positive way. And then once, if you're like where I'm from, once we see something look good, Oh, well, you know, I could do a little bit more. You know, I can, yeah. I can, I can do a little bit extra. I can do 15. Right. And all of a sudden it becomes a thing. Right. And then they, they show their kids and then they show their aunt and then they show. And again, this is, this part of society is we have the ability, we have to take back control of our financial future and our, our happiness as it's tied to that because we can, you know, if we take, just think about it, Sean, if we take, I take Starbucks off the corner. Mm-hmm. Chipotle off the street, right? <laughs> Subway out the corner and everything else, right? When we saw we saw this happen, right? So during the pandemic, we saw people couldn't go anywhere and spend any money. So guess what they did? People were like, I got more money now than I've ever had. And I'm like, of course, because you can't go spend it. You're not spending it on gas. You're not spending it on half the stuff, right? Only thing you're spending it on is Amazon. So of course you have more money, <laughs> right. right? And that, that should have been that should have been a sign to say, I can do it if I want to. Mm. Right. And so we have to realize, you know, the pandemic is upon us because of COVID. But the real pandemic that society right now is the fact that people spend more money than they make. 
That's real. That's really, that's really just like in health and fitness. People don't, when I was in Europe, here's one for you. And just health and fitness. Um, I'm a pretty thin, what they call athletic build, right? Yeah. <laughs> Slend- <laughs> slender, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, people will ask all the time, how are you able to stay fairly thin? I, I work out and I do things and I eat well and things like that, but there's, it's, 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 it's intentional, right? But the, but the big thing, when I was over in Europe, I found something amazingly inspiring. I saw that people ate till they were not hungry versus ate, eating to be full. Mm. Now, that was a difference because when I was over here in the United States, you can go get the, the Big Mac meal, super size, super size, make it bigger, right? You know, everything's great, grandiose. When I was over in Europe, they would say, well, I would say, where, 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 I gave me my first plate in Europe, and they, it was like pasta on a plate probably this size. And I'm like, where's the rest of the food? Where's the bread? Where's this? Where's this? And they were like, that's it. They say, eat that, and if you're still hungry, we'll get you more. And so I started to realize when I was there that people, and when you go to Europe, and if you go to the beach in Europe, you see people that maybe, you know, they may be a little overweight, but you don't see the grotesquely overweight in an abundance. You don't see that. And the reason why is the guy told me, he said, we don't eat here until we, um, uh, until we're full. We eat till we're no longer hungry. Yeah, I would say to people. That's a different mindset. Yeah, I would say to people, eat till you're fulfilled, not yeah. full, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will, <clears throat> I do want to co sign on something you said about telling people to save $10. Everyone can save $10. It was two years ago, and one of our babysitters, she was ta- talking to me about just finances and how hard it was. And, you know, I pay her. So I'm sitting there like, this this doesn't make sense what you're saying because I know your lifestyle. I know where you are every day and I know how much money you make. And so I challenged her, you know, I just, we sat down one day and I was like, you know, this is how much money you make. I I said, I I bet you for four months, you could save $20 a day. I was like, save $20 a day. And I'm not a financial advisor, but I said, Put it into a, another account where you can't just go to the ATM and take it out. I was like, just just do this for me. And after it was a certain amount of months and and I just checked in on I was like, you know, how much money did you save? She's like, I saved eight hundred dollars. And she was like floored and something had happened to her car and she was able to go get it fixed. Whereas before it would have been like. Uh, you know, maybe can I get paid earlier? Can I get extra hours? And so I just want to tell people out there that that $10 a day, or maybe for some people it's five. And I know I can talk to my family who's listening right now. Maybe it's $3 a day, but $3 a day is $15 a week is $60 a month. And so that's how, you know, for me, it worked for me. It worked for me. That's how I, I, And, you know, I really started to learn about finances from my husband. And this is, you know, we've been together for 10 years. So, look, I was 33 years old. So I was a little bit older even after being successful in my my career. So I just want to say to people, it is it is possible. And so thank you for saying that, because it just reminded me of that story really quick. um, So for those of you who are listening who may not know this. Chris's partner is Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald. And one day she called me on the phone and she said, Chris is going to get really mad at you that I told you this, but he would never tell you this. <laughs> so, uh oh, I'm telling on Lauren. So there's, you know, recently you've, you accomplished something that I, I don't, I don't know how many people have accomplished it, but can you tell us that, you know, those accolades that you recently <laughs> got? <laughs> she told me you wouldn't tell me, but I said, Chris loves me. He'll tell me. And I think it's really inspiring for people to hear. (laughs) Okay. Um, (laughs) So, so, so our whole thing is we, um, you know, I believe so. So let me, let me, let me rewind the tape. Why it's hard to talk about. Perfect. I love it. So, um, you know, I, I believe that, um, part of, my gift fair has fair. been to inspire people to do things that are uncomfortable for themselves that they would not do for themselves without mm. guidance and without 
someone else inspiring them to that you're better than that. Does that make sense? So, 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 so for me, it's never really about me. For me, it's about this is much bigger than me, right? And so my first gift in life was sports. I was able to play basketball. I was able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Right? I was able to play basketball. And it, it, it was the gift of, of, of being able to entertain people in a way. Right. And I was able to entertain them for two to three hours of their life. They could forget about everything else that was going on in their life. You understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. what it was. And so that was the gift. But when that gift is taken away from you, you no longer can can give people that gift in that way. You have to figure out in yourself, what is that gift? Now, how do I use that in a much bigger platform? Because that's such a small part of my life. Right. If you look at the window right. of time, that window of time was 18, 19 years of my life. Right. So, but I now have 60, 70 years of my life. So now what, what's next? And so I had to retool that, that gift. Right. And so we've been very fortunate to, to the companies in which we affiliate and work with and do business with, um, uh, uh, you know, out of the so many advisors in the country, my group, um, uh, we were able to, to, to land the number one spot in the nation. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty coveted thing, right? So there's only been like 40 people who's ever donned the right, the white jacket, right? And, yeah. Uh, and uh, in the history of, the, of those companies, of the company that we affiliate with and, and that uh, does our underwriting process and our back office stuff, um, there's never been an African American ever at the top. And so um, it, it was, it was, it was, it was humbling for me to, 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 uh, to, to wear that, that, that championship for a year, but I was wearing the championship of those, for those people that didn't have a voice because many of the people that are behind me are, are diverse in nature, whether they're lifestyle or whether they're, they're, they're minorities or whether they're, they're women or whether they're, you know, I, I embrace, I wear those, those shackles every day. And I mm-hmm. actually represent those people uh, on a day-to-day basis. And so that's why it's difficult to talk about. But then once you're, once you, once you've tasted the wine of a champion, you have that desire to win again. <laughs> so yes. since 1858, since 1858, um, I'm, I'm one of the champions in that arena. And then we had a repeat year last year. And I told them at the end of the year, I said, listen, somebody gonna have to take this because I'm not just going to lose it. So, um, <laughs> and I just continue, I continue to change the narrative. Like if we did, you know, if we did, uh, our revenue last year, my objective this year is to double it. People are like, how are you going to do that? Well, somebody else is doing it so I can do it. And I just believe that, right? So mm-hmm. I'm a big believer. So there's never in the history of the of, of, of the company been a, a, a two-time champion ever, um, let alone there's never been anybody that's a minority. And uh, you know, our goal is to win in 10 years in a row, right, is to rewrite the record books. And why else are we doing this? Right? Yeah, why? Why, else we, why else are we doing this? And, uh, you know, if we can impact the lives of individuals that we touch at – at a billion, two billion, three billion dollars of, of revenue to help families. That's what we're doing. I mean, that's that's a grassroots effort at, at uh, doing the right things on purpose. Um, I was so going to say, it's not about money anymore. It's about it's about impact for us and the ability to change what's normal because because we're abnormal. Six nine. Uh, I mean, that's not normal. <laughs> Walking down the street, that's not normal. That's, that's, that's weird and awkward and strange, right? And, and I've been different my entire life. I figure why not do be different in this? Why not? Well, I, I do know uh, Lauren always finds ways to empower me. And I'm 100% sure that she knew that I would be very inspired by that. So I really thank you for sharing because I know you are extremely humble in that arena. And I know when you said it, you like to get uncomfortable and make people uncomfortable. And I know that made you uncomfortable, but it is going to inspire people. But I th- the most important thing is what I knew and what we know now is that what you do and your main focus is to help inspire the lives of other people. And by you taking on that passion is in and being successful at it and being very competitive at it, which I love to. Um, it's just enhancing other people's lives. With that said, you know, I would really love to know your definition of trust and believe and how you apply it 
to your business, to your clients and yourself every single day? Absolutely. So let's just start with belief. Shall we? Um, we shall. You know, uh, I, 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 my honest thought is that you have to believe in yourself and something greater than yourself to become that. Um, if you believe that you are where you need to be, then you stop growing. You need to grow and grow and brown and die, right? So, 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 so my my belief is you're better than where you are today. Mm. You just are, right? And you just haven't. Maybe I can give you my rose colored glasses so you can see it, right? You're better than where you are. You uh, you deserve more than what you have, right? Every there's there's so much opportunity out there. Maybe you just need to be inspired to achieve it, right? Maybe you just need to be connected to somebody with that energy and that vibe to be like, I I have people that will tell me, Sean, on a regular basis, I don't know what we're doing, but I'm just going with you, right? That's, <laughs> I know you're, whatever you're doing, that's what we're doing, right? And, uh, and, and, and so that confidence that, 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 that I bleed on people to believe in themselves bigger than what their current circumstances are to, to, to talk about we transcend. My goal is to help you transcend your socioeconomic stance and where you came from to be better than what you are today, right? And that's, you know, if you can transcend, just think of that, I can, I can become better. I, I get, I'm bigger, so much bigger in impact than what I can be today. I think everybody moves forward. You know, and trust is one of those things that does not, does not come easily in society just because of the, the nature of the society in which we currently live. And mm-hmm. so we have to, to, to seek first, to understand, and to be understood, and we use that in our practice. So when people do talk to us and they say, hey, you know, I'm looking for a good coach like Chris Gandy to help me organize my actions and intent. I want to get in uh, what they call financial physical shape, right? We actually take them through an examination before prognosis because exam- uh, prognosis before examination is malpractice in anybody's book, just like a physician. You don't walk in and say, they say, oh, don't say anything. We're not going to do an examination. We understand what's wrong. That's not what happens. And we're going to start cutting. Oh, we're going to do an examination first. And then we're going to do a couple examinations and then we'll figure it out as we go along. And you're going to consult me along the way. You're actually going to leave me out there. So, so we do a lot of that. Seek first to understand and to be understood. So if you, you inquired about me as a coach, the first thing I do is I just ask you the things that are important to you and why are they Mm. important? And if we don't have an alignment there, we're going to look for alignment issues, regardless of products and services. Because at the end of the day, Sean, the black and white is I'm no different than any other advisor. The only difference is I hate losing. You understand? <laughs> right? Yeah. And because we hate, we hate losing, the understanding is and my X's and O's and the way I which I played sports, the difference between most professional sports teams is the execution of the plays on the sports team. So there is a difference between me other than we're 6'9", is that we execute better than 80% of all the financial advisors on the planet. And that's mm-hmm. how we've been able to. So if you trust and believe in what we're doing, you know, we're agile and mobile and we want to put, I mean, Sean, here's the challenge. You ready? So I'm getting you on board with this. My goal is to, are you ready? I'm ready. Goal, I'm so ready. Are you ready? My goal is to, before I leave the face of this earth, there's the there's the dash in between when I started and when I ended. My goal is to leave five billion dollars of impact in this world. That was, and I, it's, it's a number, right? And it's a number that if you ask me, um, if I can impact the diverse community in a, in, a, in a positive way, if I can diverse, if I can impact people that are no longer here in a diverse way, the kids that are coming up, I've shown, I've paved the way for other people to be able to take that 5 billion and make it 10 billion, hundred billion. And we've made, we started to change the systematic process that is in place that has that's held us down and stopped us from achieving our lifelong success and goals. That's important. And I know, and I know you can do it. Chris Gandy, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Everyone out there, all you have to do is check out our show notes and how you can find Chris and um, continue to be inspired within your life. Thank you, Chris. Trust and believe. I love it. Thank you so much, man. Seriously, it was freaking awesome. As you heard Chris talking about all things finances, there really is no barrier 
for you to find that financial freedom. It's really about you having a great relationship with your finances, just like you do in your fitness and your exercise and find a way to be inspired so that you too can leave a legacy, but also have a great quality of life. And if you do those things, you will trust and believe not only in you, but what you're doing with your money. I'll see you next time.